haven't received a notice. Oh, oh well, uh, we yeah, we got notice that the governor is uh, flying to D.C. with the first gentleman, Jeff Cook, the chief of staff, John Jr. Calvo, the communications director, Crystal Paco San Augustine, and then meeting them there will be the... Vera Tapasnia. Vera Tapasnia. Something, something, something. Some, there's a new title they gave her. Yeah. She's That's already like, there, right? She's already there, yeah. So she's there um, yeah. waiting for them. Yeah, so guess what? what? I, I guess it's official. You are the acting lieutenant governor. If she's, if she's left the island, yes, then I am. Wow. So what's the protocol? They don't say, hey, you're you're up. or You don't get you like an EFIT nameplate or something? <laughs> <laughs> they don't tell you <laughs> officially? Well... We'll see. I I don't think I've received an email yet. Now's your chance to pay the rise act. You can go in there <laughs> up to Adloop like I'm here from here to sit in my office. <laughs> oh, believe me, if I could, I would. I would absolutely do that. I don't see any reason to delay the payment of the rise right now. I think the money's been sitting there since, you know, March, was it? Or, and uh, when I listened in on the, you know, kind of a... Uh, a webinar that, that they had for congressmen and, and others uh, across the states. Uh, it was very clear that other jurisdictions are spending their their our ARP funds. They are going to have to report. The first report is due August 31. That means report on expenditures. So, yeah, I think it's. Um, I don't see any reason why we're continuing to hold on to that money. The money should be given out to the people. I agree that they are in great need and that that this could very much help them. And so it should go out as soon as possible. What about this uh, conversation that we with Senator Moylan where um, he was calling for an emergency session and then I believe the governor uh, in the press conference had said that the, um, the situation with the rise or the all rise is not an emergency. Well, I, um, Senator Moylan also asked me as a speaker to call an emergency session on his Bill 75. And I responded to him that um, the bill as written or as introduced does not squarely address the emergency that he describes. I agree that the, the, he describes the emergency as the people standing in line to get the mayor's uh, verification and all of that, um, you know, hassle that they're, they're having to go through. And I completely agree with him. However, the bill did not directly address that. So I told him, uh, first of all, um, that uh, the committee chair on appropriations has set a hearing for his bill. It's going to be July 28th, I believe. And so we will have a public hearing on that. I also asked the governor again um, on Tuesday to, to do what she can by executive order as she did to increase the you know eligibility for the rise to do the same thing by executive order and to remove the requirements for mayor's verification whatever else people are having to line up for and i've spoken to the director of revenue and taxation and she's she seems like she is doing everything in her power to remove those requirements as well and so she has to work with the office of the governor you know, I'm. Uh, I was hoping that that would be done uh, Tuesday or Wednesday, yesterday, and uh, or, or this early this morning. So, but I haven't seen anything yet. And so, in the in interim, we are introducing another bill, uh, Senator Moylan, myself, and Senator San Augustine, to to remove those impediments directly, uh, to remove all the rules and leave it up to. Uh, rules for documentation and leave it up to the De Department of Revenue and Taxation to decide what is necessary because in my discussions with the director she seems very reasonable and she wants the minimal she wants that consent form to access your 1040s she wants your social security number and she wants um, you know if you were if you did not file and you because of uh, disability that that form that you submit to her and and it seems to me like she's able to get the job done with just those forms. There was something so that's that, what we're hoping to accomplish uh, in the next few days. If, yeah. There was something that, Chris, you know, before we went on the air today and we were talking about this whole issue with uh, the RISE Act, and I thought that was actually a very good point that you, you'd made, that the fact that we, <laughs> the fact that we are currently and still in this uh, declaration of a public health emergency, yeah. I mean, wouldn't that, you could use that as an argument as well. It is an emergency because we are in and have been in a state of emergency for over, it's been over, over a year. year. Yeah. 
Yes, no, I agree. I agree. So getting this money out is definitely urgent, I think. And so we are going to do everything we can. I'm just saying that uh, we we have to use the right mechanism. So we, when we declare one bill to be an emergency or, you know, we wait, what we're doing actually here, um, the governor's different, but here, if we're going to, uh, it's to waive a public hearing. And so to waive a public hearing, you have to declare that there is a, a danger to health and safety of the people. And so, and that, that the bill that we're going to address is actually going to resolve that. And so it's just a matter of the bill, it's not, directly addressing what the, the emergency is. The bill that we're, um, Senator Moreland was talking about changes the amounts and it doesn't necessarily change the procedures. And I think that's really what we have to do. We have to stop the long lines. We have to stop people with disabilities and the elderly from having to line up during this uh, pandemic. Yeah. And so while that continues to exist, we want to avoid all of that as, as much as possible. And especially if, um, you know, Department of Revenue and Taxation concurs that it's it's not necessary for them to to get these rise payments out. But more importantly, you know, whatever we do here, we're just uh, adjusting the process. But really, payment of the rise is up to the governor, and I'm continuing to call on the governor to pay the rise, to pay that money, to give it out. We are sitting on the money; we're not um, using it while people are in need. And so, I think that's the bigger point, and that is really the issue that has to be uh, acted on. And so I think um, I feel confident to say that my colleagues would agree with that because we were unanimous in our support of the rise. We passed it since December last year. And um, I think everybody would agree that that needs to go out and that is uh, within the power of the governor. And so we are definitely in unison calling on her to pay the rise. I, I can't even wrap my mind around. And as I said, these ARP funds, uh, other jurisdictions are spending them. They are reporting by the end of August. They're not submitting a plan by the end of August. They are reporting on their expenditures by the end of August. Yeah. And so that's that's another thing, right? And um, this notion that they are going to withhold their plan on the ARP funds until the we are done with the budget or you know till the end of August, it's be beginning. Um, it's it's confusing to say the least, and I'm being nice here, right? It's uh, it. I don't think we can. Um, I don't think that's going to be appropriate. We're going to have to. Uh, I've been talking to the appropriations chair and to my colleagues as to you know what what we are going to do uh, to ensure that the people of Guam have some some uh, they, they're able to look at the expenditures of these ARP funds that we're able to have some input on it and that they are truly priorities and that we're we're not going to run into issues of you know this being um, spent. Uh, unwisely we have uh, critical issues that we have to face yeah. and and this um funding to the people eligible for the rise is one of them so what are what are your colleagues saying about uh you guys aren't getting this arpa plan this investment plan uh by the time you know the budget is due to be passed because we had the minority leader on earlier this week and he yeah. said you know what we were duped yeah. we gave our plan you know mm -hmm. all, uh, we all 15 of us uh went down that loop Mm -hmm. yeah. We approved it, our spending plan. We gave it to the governor. She asked us, let me see yours. Uh, we did. And uh, since we met with her, we got nothing. So, um, he like he said, quote, we were duped. Well, I just think uh, we can't give up there. We have to keep, uh, keep on uh, thinking uh, how to approach this. And I think the budget is a big piece of this. So um, we, we just have to strategize that. The issue um, also is it's really public you know what is the public going to know like for the cares we were pretty much you know given this is what's going to happen with it period but here these these expenditures are for so much more and they're they're really almost the equivalent of our entire government of guam budget and to have the power to spend that just one person one it's uh i i don't think that's appropriate so Technically, I think there are things that we can do that uh, are going to help guide the expenditure of those funds. And I think it's incumbent upon us as a legislature to stay united on that. Right. And so public uh, scrutiny of, of how we expend these funds is one thing. And, and I, I want to ensure that that happens and that they have um, and that we, we 
continue to decide as a community what the priorities you know are for Guam and that uh, if we can stay united on this I think it's in everybody's interest including the governor to stay united on what the priorities are for Guam uh, because yep. you know for example we have to they always say you know you speak in one voice when you go to the federal government speak in one voice and uh, but we we have to we uh, showing what the plan is is a big part of that and we don't nobody expects a final plan to be disclosed today but there have been so many promises <coughs> made we can tell from our discussions with the individual agencies and the other branches that they, you know they've been promised ARP funds and so I uh, if if those kind of discussions are being had, I, I can't see why those can't be uh, disclosed to the public as well. Yeah, well, uh, it was uh, another Republican senator that said these budget without this plan, these budget oversight hearings are a waste of time. Well, they they are. Um, it's like seeing half the picture. I I agree. I don't think um, I'm satisfied that uh, we're going to sit in there. We're going to decide a spending plan for $700 million while there's $600 million sitting out there to be spent, uh, you know, any which way. And uh, I think those, we're trying to determine priorities for the government of Guam. That's all we're trying to do. And I just think uh, the people of Guam have a, a crucial role in that. And I don't want to see them bypass in this system. Yeah. Uh Speaker, so we're going to do everything we can. I don't think it's appropriate. I think they need to have a voice. How, how, I mean, if, if you just kind of track the timeline of this, right? So we got the money. I want to say it was, was it May, Bree? Or it's been so long. It's I been can't months. We can't even remember <laughs> when we got the damn money. But the governor has successfully sat on this Mount Everest of federal funding for months. Months. Hasn't spent a dollar told us that we couldn't spend anything because there was a public comment period that we had to wait until July 16th, then come to find out that the CNMI is spending their money, the states are spending their money, um, that states and other territories presumably are turning in their spending reports at the end of next month. But here we are with a governor who hasn't spent a dollar, and it's not just the rise or the all rise or whatever you want to call it, we're hearing law enforcement, mayor, staff, employees, months, months behind on COVID differential pay over time. So it's not like we're just talking about, all right, there's an imminent need for these employees also to be paid with their own for working during this pandemic. But how has the governor managed to get away with not spending a single dollar of this money? And it doesn't even look, she didn't even, I mean, she went to D.C., so we know that uh, she's not coming back till the first week of August. There's no way money's going to go out before she comes back. So how was she able to still sit on this money and not spend a dollar of it? I, I don't understand. Well, um, you're correct. It's, it's completely within her power to spend the money, and we have uh, encouraged her to do so. We did what was necessary. We put down, uh, you know, even to... to show that uh, these expenditures we're not going to object to. And we gave her an entire list of how to spend those since December. We told her spend it on rise payments to the people before you spend it on anything else and get those out. And we've been very consistent with that. The legislature, we've been consistent and we've been united in that. And we've uh, brought that to the people and we've shown the people what our priorities would be. And of course, guidelines came out after we wrote our initial, you know, request. And so there are additional things that can be, the money can be spent on. But I think, I think if the legislature was united in that, and we put a, even had a public hearing on it, the people, you know, input we've received, we um, put that up on online. And so um, there are things that are not controversial. There are things that, you know, everyone agrees these should be done these uh, must be done and uh yeah i agree there's no reason i can't see any reason to delay that and i think um so we don't know the motivations but we're going to continue to do our job and that is to keep things public we're going to continue to keep uh our you know our issues up and up uh 
in the open and, and continue to show that these are what we believe the priorities are mm -hmm. and that uh, expendi expenditure of funds on these priorities, you're not going to get any objection from the legislature. So please, you know, do that. And so um, we're just going to continue to do to do what we can in that regard. And the public is a, has a big role in this, right? Um, across the nation, they have the same issues where the governors we're given the authority to spend the money. Legislatures are trying their best to have input and see has, how that money is spent. And the public is really um, crucial. They have to be vocal and they, just like in everything, I, it shouldn't be a battle, but it, but um, if that's what we need to do, that's what we need to do, right? We need to remain vocal. And, and I think we use this um, budget process in any way that we can to ensure that agencies who are going to be spending this money are going to be spending it according to the priorities that have been set forth in the laws of war. Well, I got to ask, uh, Speaker, um, if you are going to be the acting lieutenant governor, doesn't that give you access, give you kind of some, some flexing power to say, you know what, BBMR, I want to see that investment plan today. Bam. Great idea, Bree. Uh, I've never been a lieutenant governor before, so I'm going to try it out. Yes, great <laughs> idea. Mm. Maybe. Uh, yeah, speaker, own it. Come know, on, I Speaker. Know. I mean, that's just the... the uh, no, I agree. I agree. I think we have to use every option available to us uh, when they are playing this uh, kind of, you know, hide the plan game. I don't know why. It, it doesn't make sense to me. I just think this is something we need to talk about. Uh, put it on the table and let's uh, discuss it and let's make it better. And that's something, you know, they have a great team up there and, you know, across the government of Guam, there's a great team in place. However, I just think there can always be, with input, things can be better. And uh, with input, you can get consensus and we can get these things paid out smoothly and efficiently and, um, and we can make them better. For example, the rise, you know, stop the lines. Let's get rid of that and uh, move on. Yeah. Um, okay, so we look forward to uh, seeing that investment plan. Oh. Yeah, so <laughs> we got the keys to, to um, LT Josh's office? Or, <laughs> right. No, and you know what, what else is this so troubling is that there's been no information. Like the governor hasn't even come out and said, hey, you know, outside of I want to build a new hospital, um, this is what we're thinking. I mean, I don't know. I feel like she just owes it to the people of Guam to come out and say, hey, hey, guys, I know. I know everyone's worrying about the money, and I know that you guys have Google, and you can see that other places are spending it, and I'm not, and this is why. You know, I feel like if people at least heard some kind of reason, right. whether or not they want to believe what I mean. it. I agree. Put it on the table, and let's uh, all deal with it as best we can. And that's, um, yeah, it's unfortunate, but... Uh, you know, we're going to continue to do what we do. Like, and that's why we came out with a plan very early because we wanted a public discussion on this. We want it up on the table and we knew it could get better. We knew for sure. And, and then when the guidelines came out, there were things that were added. So, I'll, you know, I don't think there's any um, harm in putting up something that you have to amend. I just think that's, that just shows um, that you're willing to listen to the people of Guam and that we should do that always. And so we're going to continue to do what we're supposed to do, and that is put our plans up early, put our priorities up, and, uh, and you know, adjust the laws that we have to to ensure the spending is appropriate. Um, I'm, I'm looking at things in the budget that uh, we might need to consider that we haven't considered before, you know, um, and so we'll try. Uh, you know, there's so, and just going through some of the comments on these, these rise stories that we talk about, there's, there's kind of two trains of thought that you see occurring a lot. One of them is that this idea that somehow this money is earning interest in the bank, which I don't even know is accurate. Uh, but then there's the other side of it where people say, oh, she's just sitting on the money because next year's an election year and this is a $600 million campaign war chest. I guess what are your thoughts on, on that kind of side of it? Is that a reality, you think? I don't know. You know, I, I hesitate to comment on the politics of it all because that's just going to really, um, I mean, that people are saying that or feeling that it's, 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 um, it's very troubling. It shouldn't, 
we don't have to go down that road, right? I feel like if we could just get these plans on the table and have open discussions, and then we wouldn't have to speculate as to what the reasons are. And uh, all this speculation is what uh, happened in the beginning of our pandemic, right? That's when people start to get very negative about, you know, and suspicious about why are we doing this this way or that way? And I just think we need to do our best to avoid those types of negative speculations. And the only way to do that is to be upfront. Yeah, so, and that's what causes um, it is when people don't know what's going on, they start filling exactly. the void and yeah. then you have, they, you have a- so smart, yeah. If you give them the explanation, they're gonna be able to follow it and they'll follow along like why, you know, our progress and, you know, we're overcoming this. Like, for example, when Daphne comes on and explains, you know, I put in my plan, I'm waiting for the, you know, feds to give their approval on it. Um, we can follow that. And, you know, it's frustrating. We're impatient. We want that money to come out, but we can follow it if she continues to give us an update every, you know, every few days, which, which I think um, that's their strength when they do that. And uh, so doing the opposite is just, it's, uh, it's a shortfall. You know, so what? we need to step. Yeah. yeah. And the legislature, we need to stay united and we need to, keep the pressure on to, to put these things on the table. You know, what, what bothers we're gonna me? Go in, we're going to go, go ahead. Sabrina. Can, can, can we just hold on to what's bothering everybody for just a second? We're going to jump over to KUMT. <laughs> everybody hold your bothers. <laughs> KUAMTV, here we come right now on the link. Good morning. Welcome back to the link. Miss the link, miss a lot, so don't miss it. Brought to you by Cobble Enterprises, ITD, Jack in the Box, and Pacific Point. We're uh, in progress with our uh, weekly update with the Speaker of the Guam Legislature, Speaker Therese Terlahi. Uh, we're talking American Rescue Plan Act fund spending. What spending? There's none of it. And we now uh, go back to Sabrina Saws Mantanani. I was just saying that just what bothers me is that it, it, this all just kind of when I think about how we started this new year and how far we've come, um, it takes me back to the speech uh, that you gave, um, Speaker, on you know bringing trust back into the legislature, back into our elected leaders, and then later on, uh, the governor she issued her statement with regard to the inauguration of the 36th Guam Legislature, a whole slate of new elected leaders, and something that she had wrote was like you know we need to to get to work. Um, she said, and I pulled it up because it reminded me um, that she was excited to work with the speaker and the members of the 36th Guam legislature. Um, none of us can do this alone. Together we can solve problems and make the government a powerful force for good. <laughs> Wait, who said that? The speaker said that? Yeah, because she's... No, 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 no. That was the governor. Oh, in the governor in, said In congratulating yeah. the the inauguration of the the senators and the mayors and she was calling on everybody you know let's work t together what we've got a great deal of work to do to creating jobs kickstarting our economy and improving the lives of our people and this was ahead of everybody knowing that we were going to get this big you know yes. uh, mm -hmm. all this money mm -hmm. from from um, ARPA mm -hmm. and that's because we didn't have money then, and the governor was like, "Let's work together because we're broke." But now that we got money, no, but she's we like, all yeah, knew, I don't work with we anybody. all knew that we were going to be getting this money, uh, this assistance, and that was in January. We got the money in May, yeah. and now we nobody is going to get anything. It looks like until August or the end of August or September. Well, we're going to continue to do what we can do. I can't answer for the governor you know, this morning, but uh, she, you know, as a legislature, I am sure that my colleagues and I are going to continue to do what we, what we can, and we're going to continue to do it united as possible. So, for example, we're going into session the uh, first week of August. Uh, we are, um, of course, August is, August is set aside for budget, but in the first week, we're going to have some other bills put on the agenda and get those out. And we're going to also uh, be considering the nomination of Alberto Colantino as judge of the Superior mm -hmm. Court. We had a public hearing on that. I don't know if you watched that uh, 
there was a lot of uh, very uh, good testimony in his favor. And so we're looking forward to that. And um, and then some other bills that we can get through before the budget is uh, uh, dispersed to us so that we can get to the budget deliberations. And as I said, because of the ARP funds, I, I expect um, in discussions with my colleagues, I, I think this is correct, that they are budget deliberations are um, going to be very much, uh, I don't know, focused, but uh, definitely the ARP funding that is almost equivalent to our GovGuam budget is going to be a huge part of our consideration as we make these budget deliberations. And again, you know, we're here, we're supposed to, we're supposed to be a check and balance. I think that legislature is up to the task and I think uh, we're going to do whatever is possible to make sure that the ARP funds are spent in accordance with the priorities of the people of Guam and that uh, we have great needs out there and we have a great opportunity also. And so we want to make sure that this opportunity is not wasted and that this opportunity is one. I mean, you can go both ways, right? There's a way where you can do it. Um, without any consensus and there's a way where you can get consensus. And I think if we can get consensus, we're gonna build trust. We're not gonna have a cares to, right? Where it's question after question after question is going to be everybody on Guam is up with the same plan and we agree with these priorities and we are moving forward. And we, are, we know what we're going to expect at the end of you know the two, three, four, five years from now, what those big goals are and for future generations. And so this is our opportunity to do that. And I'm, I for one, and I, I am just very confident my colleagues feel the same, we are not going to waste this opportunity. So we're gonna do everything we can. So it looks frustrating now, but um, I'm confident we're going to find a way. Well, you said question after question after question. Yeah. How about the $3 million question Ooh. cost oh, in yeah. this audit yes. that re wow. was recently released by the public auditor? So remember, <laughs> Of course, remember Senator Perez had a oversight hearing on that and that was all laid out very clearly at the time that uh, they were claiming superpower expenditure of that money and that they admitted it was not pursuant to the procurement law, GSA was not involved at all and it, that was all on the record back then and, and yeah, even the Attorney General's office was involved in saying um, uh, we approved this, right? Yeah. So we like this. The big question now is what happens after the audit, right? And uh, what action does the attorney general's office going to take, uh, if any, on this? Yeah, if any. So yeah, I, I'm I'm glad he did the audit. It's uh, the the thing about audits, right? They're they're after the fact. So I thought it was very clear when Senator Perez took the initiative, had those oversight hearings, and and really laid it out. It was so crystal clear at the time that uh, they had. They had gone way beyond the procurement law, so, so uh, that should have been very apparent <laughs> to the attorney general's <laughs> office at the time, who Sorry. you know, who is charged oh, with why the, is this in, funny? charged with enforcing these things. Yeah, and that's really where we, we may have a gap. Did you see our interview with the auditor? We had the public auditor on uh, Tuesday, and so basically he said that uh, there. I mean, I felt like he said this was an illegal procurement. So I asked him, I mean, is there anything actionable that you're going to send over to the AG? And he was just like tap dancing all around the questions. But in, in your estimation, do you think that there is anything that could be prosecutable with this the audit and its findings? I don't know, but I'm going to send that audit and the, uh, the oversight hearing transcript over to the AG again. Uh, the, you know... The, the AG was involved in the oversight hearing and they were involved in these procurements. They were directly involved. So there's, I'm not sure what they're going to do, if anything, but uh, we're definitely gonna make sure that it's on, on their table and that they they have no excuse not to take a look at it. Um, yeah. I know I agree. But, you know, those were the big questions we had back then, right? And we don't wanna go through that again. That's, that is really, you know, we need a, we need it. Um, the details enough to know that we can trust how they're going to spend the money and that we're not have to, you know, continue to hound them as to every single dollar because we've got a 
you know, in general, a consensus on how it will be spent. And that's what we want. And, and even the methods of how it will be spent and how they will decide priorities that they don't know yet, right? For example, when we say put in infrastructure for water, we want water infrastructure, we want roads, right? Uh, the current plans are just not enough. We're not going to meet what I think we should have on Guam with our current budgets and our current uh, revenue. So this ARP fund is crucial in that regard and bringing in water to many areas is going to be able to allow us to expand affordable housing, expand businesses, expand revenue, and hopefully improve quality of life, which that's my big hope for this money. We're going to improve quality of life all the way around. And so uh, we can't do it without the ARP funds. And so I just, and I can't see why anyone's going to object to that type of use of it. And so I would hope that they could put those things on the table as soon as possible. Otherwise, we're going through a budget where we are seeing DPW come in with a list of how many roads they're going to accomplish in FY22. And, you know, it's a good list. It's a list that was developed in conjunction with the mayors, but it's not very extensive, right? And so we know this process is excruciatingly slow for Guam, the how many roads we can get done in one fiscal year based on the revenues in that, um, in that account. So that's why I'm saying while we have this opportunity, we can't waste it and we need to take care of these, these, these infrastructure needs that are really going to improve overall quality of life. They're not so sexy sounding for uh, the Lou and Josh campaign though. Running water. Oh. Roads. Oh, no. really? Oh, I think it is. I, I know. I they but, make uh, a jingle out of it. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. All right. Well, acting lieutenant it. governor slash madam speaker. We're going. You got the yeah. keys to add lube. Let's make this count. You got what? How long is the governor going to be gone? I like, know. I think I, I think I heard like first week of August. Oh, wow. Uh, we're going to time. First week of August. <laughs> right. Yeah. We're going to do some bills, a few bills before we do the budget. Then we'll be doing the budget. And uh, yeah, a lot of these agencies, have, as you've seen, have been coming in with budgets. Uh, like, for example, public health, 17 million below uh -huh. last year's expenditures, which was, uh, you know, cut. I mean, they've been reduced. It, it's not making any sense. So I don't know, you know, uh, <laughs> maybe that's the... Uh, Sorry, we don't know what to do other than now. laugh now. I don't know what else to do. I'm either going to yeah, cuss so or laugh, so we're going to go and laugh. Yeah. Um, thank you, thank you, Madam well, Speaker. That's, that's unfortunate, yeah. yeah. I'm just saying we need, to, we need to make sense to the people of Guam as a government. We have to make sense. We have to show good faith. We have to be transparent as possible, and we have to, and we have to move, and, and I think... Uh, and I can't see again any reason why these ARP funds cannot be paid today. You, you never know, though, uh, Madam Speaker, Acting Governor Josh Tenorio, he could just say, let's pay this now. Come on. Maybe he doesn't agree. We I know there have been differences between Lou and Josh before, oh. so maybe he can be the well, liberation hero. To them for the last couple of days, so I'm very much hoping that they are seriously looking at it again okay. and that they're going to find a way. Right on. Thank you, Madam Speaker, Acting Lieutenant Governor. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, Good we'll love see coverage you. last night, Sabrina. That was oh. fun. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Stay Take safe. Care. See you. Yeah, great show last night, Bree and Jason. Oh, man. That was, it was nice, right, to just kind of do something fun, I think. You yeah. Know. Yep. Something and fun. And then come back to this stuff. <laughs> Come back yeah, to this crap. Short-lived, short-lived yeah, fun times. Uh, I, I really don't get it. And, you know, let's implore our acting uh, governor, Josh Denorio, because he could come in and totally, totally, totally save the day. I mean, he could. Totally. He totally could. He could be like, you know what? Enough. 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 